assessing the client's passive range of motion of the client's hip. And this will be done with the knee relaxed and the ankle relaxed. So Can Will, I touch your leg? Yes. Sure. Awesome. So Will's just gonna move his leg up like that and put his leg over the, uh, the client's leg to stop him from moving. So that way you're accurately measuring the mobility of the hip. Now I'm just gonna do a quick measurement. Motion appears to be about 135 degrees on the right foot. Yeah. On the right. So now we will be assessing the client's hips passive range of motion with the knee extended. So Will here is just gonna. Oh, I can touch your leg again. Yes, I can. Thank you. Will is just gonna raise his leg straight up, with the knee extended, with his foot over the client's leg to hold it down. And then I'm just gonna measure. That's all I can go. So the client's passive range of motion, the client's hip with the knee extended appears to be about 70 degrees. We will be assessing the client's hips active range of motion and this will be done with the knee relaxed. So if you wouldn't mind just raising your leg straight up, just like that, yeah. Keeping your back on the ground and your leg, other leg on the ground, I'm just going to do a quick measurement. Client's active range of motion of the client's hip appears to be about 115 degrees. We'll be assessing the client's hips active range of motion with the knee extended. So if you wouldn't mind just raising your leg straight up, keep your make sure to keep your knee straight, okay? Go as far as you can. Alright, thank you. The clients, the clients active range of motion of their hip appears to be about 65 degrees. We did find that um, they indeed the passive and active range of motion are different in our tests. So just going through the numbers we got in tests, uh, we got when the, uh, the knee joint was relaxed, we got passive range of motion of the hip to be 135 degrees. And when um, in active, it was only 115 degrees. And then next, when the knee was extended, we got uh, 70 degrees for passive range of motion and 65 degrees for active range of motion. And to answer the question um, why, the, why the hip joint can be, uh, further, uh, can be further flexed when um, pushed or in um, passive range of motion, it's because um, the patient's uh, hip flexors aren't sufficient to get a full range of motion in the hip um, by themselves. And you can always push a joint um, further with force than the joint would move actively. So we would end up using the exact same active and passive range of motion measurements for client B because in client B's profession they are they need to have a good active and passive range of motion in their hip area so we would pretty much just assess the patient's range of motion actively and passively and then determine if it was potentially an inhibit, inhibiting factor in their profession or if it could be and then we'd assign any activities such as stretches or exercises that could improve the active or passive range of motion. Assessing the passive range of motion of the hamstrings. <laughs> oh. Why are you laughing? <laughs> we have to assess the passive range of motion of his hips. Oh, I know, that's hamstring. Instruments for the client's knee and oh. <laughs> was, oh, oh, I, I kind of skipped from top was uh, far superior when, oh, why are you, what? you see always, oh, these people are running, uh, we see this occurring in both the tests, was because a patient can, <laughs> there I should say, oh, uh, that, yeah, and is not strong enough to, um, to fully, um, put it, ah, uh, no, that,